Welcome back to Never Famous. Please make sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Audi. That's Vinny. He is Ro. And this is the home of the purple pill. The positive reactions for men. That's that's what the that's what purple pill means. I don't know. Whatever you're making it mean. It's gonna make it mean something. So it's it's gonna mean it means positivity. It means positive conversations amongst people, uh, citizens of America. Citizens. And it just positive, be the middle ground. A positive version <laughs> of the red pill for men. It's not even the red pill because I don't think we're yeah. having red pill conversations. We're going. We it's not either red nor purple. I mean, it's not either red nor blue. It's purple. And that's the whole reason. It's like we're gonna be trying to come at, at it from the middle. Be reasonable in some things. Ah, right, you got this video. I have no idea what I'm watching, but I guess I'll hit play. Someone needs to let me know if I am the only one that has noticed that men are not like how they were when our parents were growing up like i grew up i don't know if it's because like the italian values or what like i grew up uh neither are women <laughs> Just... <laughs> like i grew up like the man is supposed to take care of the woman the the man is supposed to go up to the girls like the the man is supposed to have drive and initiate initiate everything like i feel like now it's so hard to find guys that like even just in general have drive in life like i feel like it's so different and i don't know like because pers- women like you drive it all out of us man y'all so hard to, <laughs> y'all so hard to please now like now, so i do notice how she notice how she said initiate everything like like women, no i do i do agree that right. men have less drive I think that's a valid point. I, 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 but wasn't, I, I wasn't saying no to that. But I think there's a reason why men have less drive now. I'm, and I'm not saying it's all women, per se. Uh, but I do what agree that men do? do have less drive right now. We can we can break it down further in a minute. Let me see where she goes with this. I personally never get approached. I never. Maybe something's wrong with me. I don't know. But, like, I, I feel like then, like, whenever I, like, talk about it, everyone's like, oh, well, they, they want the girl to, like, go up to them. Like, wh- what? What? When did this change? When did this change? Because I want a man. I don't want to be the man. Someone come up. Uh, that changed since the term microaggression became a thing. And every time women's got approached, it was becoming harassment, especially if it was someone they didn't like, as opposed to saying somebody approached me that I didn't want to talk to and I told them no. It was more of what you see on TikTok every other day women yelling feral 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 because a man is looking at them in the background feral 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 like fucking feral (laughs) someone come up to me anyways i just feel like there's no manly men i just don't think so i think every guy i've met is like honestly super emotional and that's fine. Like, I'm all about feelings, whatever. Like, I'm an emotional person. So, like, that's okay. But I feel like it's definitely, like, sometimes worse than girls. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, it's crazy. Anyways, so if anyone knows if is a- family men still exist, let me know. Or if I'm the only one that thinks they don't. I don't know. That is also a conversation that we've had before. It was the, the last thing that she said there. Um... Fuck, I now forgot. Okay. No, there's a bunch of good points that she brought up that are yeah. actually extremely true and valid. The only problem is that she doesn't realize that it was likely something that came to be because of women's perspective on what how, how they wanted to deal in life as far as dating and being around men and how they wanted to be seen in the workplace and so on. You want it to be seen... Uh, almost in the same exact light as men in, in day-to-day life. And you have also been the one saying, we want men to be more in tune with their emotions. We want them to be more emotional. We want this and that. And I think what's happened is women then took on the role of being more manly and from a perspective of being more masculine, so being tougher, being more direct. So it's almost like we flip-flopped. And genetically, that goes against our being. And I think for many women now, they're like, damn, we want it to be like it was back in the days. But we kind of ruin men by asking them to be what we don't want them to be. Hmm. Women, whatever whatever kind of man y'all, y'all want, like, y'all make us, like, y'all make that man popular. Like, y'all make that man hot type shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, whatever whatever they ask of us, that's what we go. Like, we, we react to what they put out. 
type shit to what they ask of us. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they make yeah. popular, that's what men are going to do. But the problem is that you have to realize for the men in your generation, and I'm now I'm talking to her, she sounds to be maybe late teens, early 20s, uh, they're gone. And what I mean by that is this is something that's going to change in the generations to come. So like if you look at it like gradually, like our parents' generation now coming to us, probably millennials, you kind of have it like evenly split. By the time you got to Gen Z, you got way more emotional men. I get it because that's how they grew up and that's how they were raised. And oftentimes the way you were raised and the way you were brought up, that's who you become and that's who you are. So most of the men you're probably going to date unless you want to date up and age drastically, you're going to have to adapt to a more emotional man. It's probably raised by a single mom. Because that was that when we seen that spike the start, start to go up was, was would be around the kids that were born uh, when 1995 forward, which would include me. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and is that even that? But you want to keep in mind, like, her parents... Like, and one, I don't know her, so from now on, I'm going to make a scenario of another person that's close to your age and might have been of Italian descent. How many men had your mom been with before she married your dad? How many people did, was she in a serious relationship with before she married your dad? You also want to keep in mind that when your dad might have married your mom, it was very likely that he was one of the first people in her life that she committed to in such a way and she had a lot of things that were unique and were first times for him to experience even at your young age now can you say that a man will come in and they will receive a bunch of first times from you in experiences when it comes to life and i think that plays a massive role in the way things used to be back in the day and that's why the level of commitment people used to do is very, very different than it is now. I don't think people commit for the other. They commit to themselves because they only it, care about their own it makes, things. It makes the moments more magical because that first time that both of y'all go somewhere for the first time, do something for the first time, meet something for the first time, mm-hmm. and it's like, yo, it's so fire. Yeah. We're discovering it's it together. Yeah. But you done done this shit with seven other boyfriends you didn't had. So for you, it's like you know the hot spots, but... You don't get that magical feeling for you just going back to someone you know is good. It's no longer special. Yeah. So, like, there's no element of being special. Damn. And I think that's one of those things that many people don't 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 consider or think about. And that's why when I hear women, I'm like, oh, like I want to be independent. I want to have like some of the words I hear often, and 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 I normally don't comment much on it. But to me, if I was a man that was single, would be red flags. Is oh, I want to be cultured. I want to be well traveled. I want to do this, this, and that. If I was a man that was single, in my mind, I would be like, cool. So you want to have all the experiences that I wish I could have had with you. Then why would I be with you? I'd rather have those experiences with somebody that's going to have them as first with me. And those experiences will actually have meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a strong point. I think that that's a different conversation. What is? Um, I don't think being like a woman that wants to be well-traveled is a red flag. It's a different conversation than our initial point, but I don't. I don't. No, I don't mean it in a bad. No, that's that's what what they prioritize more. I do think it's a red flag in a way of like if you want to be well traveled as you're single, like you're not saving experiences with your significant other. Other. Why the fuck would I would I stop doing some shit for somebody that's not around? If I I want to go to London, I'm not gonna wait till I find her. What if I like I find her in five years from now? That's what I'm talking about. You're talking like that Gen Zer in you. It's coming right out. Bro, that makes <laughs> it's coming right bro, out. He's I'm going to explain it to you right I don't now. Think, I don't think you're being logical. I am going to. I'm going to explain why. The main difference is, is that you're thinking very, very selfishly because you're not even considering the fact, hey, like tomorrow, for example, I can be with that someone and have those experiences. You're not even actively seeking to be with someone in a committed relationship in the very near future, but rather I'm committing to traveling the world. And after I do that, I'll find someone who I'm going to then spend now the rest of my life Now you something different. With. Now you're changing it because now you're saying tra- I'm trying to travel the world. I didn't say all that shit. Being Somebody more travel, traveling with- the world. Like going to yeah, m- but multiple- you can you can be searching for a relationship or wanting to be in a relationship and still traveling. There's people that, that spend 10, 11 months out of the year home and then they'll spend two weeks in January in, in Europe and two weeks in Asia. Or Bro, but I know when you say that for a man and a woman, it's not the same scenario. Because we know for a fact that for many women, when they're being well I'm traveled, I'm talking about the women that, they that, are, that have jobs. They that are real, not. The, they have t- they have real bro, W2s. I'm talking about the women that have W2s. Even the ones that have jobs. Like, well, even. 
ask regular women who you know who have jobs and just ask her, hey, have somebody ever bought a plane ticket for you? Yeah, but this, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But what I'm saying is if you've been in six, seven different countries in one year and you've always done it by yourself or with other girls and you never post a guy... Who's financing those trips? The dudes that's fucking all of them, but that's not exactly the point. My the point. point is me. I, what I said. The point is me wanting to go to London, so I should stop. I should not so go what to he, London. He, what he's hold saying on, hold on, is, hold on, hold on. so I should not go to London waiting for one of them hoes that already fucking been there. No, I'm gonna go to London. It's not me. Be, it's not about me being a Gen Z. Is that if I can afford to do and mm-hmm. and experience something in life, why would I not do it? And if I meet, I might meet the love of my life while I'm in London. How how do I but no but since I decided to stay in America and I never went waiting for the for what, what I thought saying. was going to be the love of my life I never met her. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying somebody it kind of does, does sound like he's saying that just a little bit because you because because what I get what he's I get what you both are saying. He's pretty much saying like why why should I wait to I travel should. the world? Why should I wait till I have somebody with me to travel the world with? Like when I can just do that, and they can find maybe find the love of his life in the process. I get that, but at the same time, when you experience these places, especially with someone, it, it is like a spark. You kind of like said it earlier. It is yeah, like it's, a, it's a it's a magical thing, but it's a big ass world. Like we could go. It's a whole lot of restaurants. It's a whole lot of city, states, countries, shit that we could do. Like there's mad, there's mad shit that we right. could do. I get, I get what you're saying. Like that, it's something that about we shouldn't, that we should. What you're trying to say is that we shouldn't all just be dating a whole bunch of different people, and because then it, it builds up too much, like bullshit in our in our minds. I get what you're trying to say, but I don't think that I should not go out and experience things just because of of like the no. hope of somebody else. And like once again, like like I said, it's very different for, and this is just the dynamic of being a man and a woman. It's very different if you say, no, I'm going to go to London and I'm taking one or two trips a year. It's very different than somebody is paying for me or multiple men are paying for me to go to different places around the world. Okay, so this, this pod is like, it's for the it's for the men and the, like, it's not for the men, but it's for positive growth for men. So talk to the men that are like, that are like me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to include that are like me that I'm like, all right, I can't, I, I can't, I'm not flying no shorties out. I can't afford that shit, but I still walk, like. What what should I do in that scenario then? No, so hold up. So then I'm gonna switch gears because remember okay. I started talking to this, to, talking to that, to that girl. girl. Yeah. So, talk, so now like, talk to so me. So that like, perspective is very different. Like, cause cause now if you're a man and you want to travel and every now and then you want to go see somewhere different, that's one thing, right? That's a very different scenario then. Cause just just you being a girl, I guarantee you, nobody's gonna pay you to just come and be at a yacht and sit around. No. Yeah. Fuck no. So that, but she would. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm keep, saying. It, keep it on me. Keep I it just on me. want to understand that the comments I was making was with that context in mind. Yeah, now, now we're, switch, we're switching, now if I'm context, switching yeah, it to what the purpose of the podcast. What's your goal? That's the first question. That's what I'm saying. Well, my, I was using myself in this scenario. I just want to go to London. I just want to try. I want, I want to see some, yeah, but see that's some different, different shit. Because that's more realistic. Like, if you're a man and you kind of have a decent job and you're kind of doing your thing and, like, you're not blowing money, more than likely, you're going to travel, but you're not going to be in a plane or in a different place every other month. No, you know no, what I mean? yeah, like two trips a year. Some of those experiences Max. are going to be, you're going to have a lot of like individual experiences that you can still save for to be with a potential significant other. What I'm saying is, what would happen is, let's say if you were the kind of men that every time, let's say you go to London, you go with one chick, right? And then you're like, All right, I'm going to go to Tokyo next. And you go with a different chick and so on. It gets to the point that these places and this kind of traveling at that point, would get diluted if you have done it 10, 12, 15 times. Because by number 16, to you, it's like, ah, I'm going on another. Like, to you, it will start to seem probably like going on a Tinder date. Another shorty in another country, another place. Exactly. <laughs> it wouldn't be as much value to the experiences, is what you're pretty much saying. Correct. But I don't, I don't think that these, like, that's what dudes are looking for in that. Uh, yeah, I don't think they are. Like, unless it's like you going with your girl or whatever, cool, but. I don't think that like I've been I've been in two relationships and in both of my relationships I went I went to Atlanta with both of them and like there were there were two completely different experiences we I did some of some same things with both of them and I and the, even then it was still two completely like completely different experiences because they're two completely different people so it wasn't yeah. it wasn't but I've only been in two relationships like I said so but it was two it was just two completely different things but I, I think mean, that's based off of who I'm with yeah I mean my thing is. I'm kind of losing my train of thought a little bit because I was I was listening to you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I because I, I get what you're saying, but now I'm gonna take it to a different level. I'm gonna okay. take it another. Now, how would you feel 
say you are going to London, right? And you are going to take someone with you. And this is the first time you're traveling with her. And she's not impressed with any of the process of that travel. Because she's been not necessarily to London, but she's flown with somebody else 20, 30 times. Not necessarily the same person, but different people. So to her, the experience of like, oh, maybe this is the first time she's traveled first class. So you like balled out and you bought her like nice tickets. You're like, oh, she's used to it. She probably already been on a private jet. So to her, first class is like, ah. Eh. Or this is the first time she's been in a lounge as opposed to like a regular. But so what, what's the first? And you're like, she ah. won't be as hyped so as like, you that's are. What I mean. what's, like, a, what's your question though? Those experiences, how would you feel? In that scenario, how much would you value that? How would I value that? I think I I think it depends on what I'm looking out of the situation. Like what I what I want out of the situation. Like I'm I'm, I'm going like with it with a perspective that you're dating this person with the intention of commitment, long term commitment. I mean, I don't know. Like I'd be sick as hell. Let me just say that <laughs> I'd be sick as hell. Like man, you clearly you're seeing that your efforts is just going to waste. I I don't think it's going to waste. I, I don't know. For don't, your, depending on your intentions. I think because we, we we all like different things. That's what I'm saying. Different people like different things. So for me, it might I might be hyped because I'm it's my first time going to London. But for her, it's like you said, she flown twenty thirty. But times. I, and we're using flying or as the as the example. You get what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that's just like easy. But imagine it's the same chick. First time you guys go on a trip together, she's like, eh, I'm unimpressed. First time she goes to a dope restaurant where let you can me, overlook the city, she's not impressed. Okay, so let me, done you, it let me ask you. Let me ask you. Is she is, one thing is unimpressed and another thing is shitting on it. There's a difference. If she's unimpressed, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really give like not that I don't give a fuck, but it's like I know I know that these aren't regular things, but I know the kind of woman that you are, so these are regular to you. So like I get that part of it, but now are you shitting on me? Because if you shitting on me, because I'm taking you to to uh, however many Michelin star restaurant, but this is the highest that it could go, then what do you tell? You can't like. It's you know you get what I'm saying like if it's yeah. regular then it's regular she's unimpressed because this is the best no, and she's been here before I get it but, but what are I mean you it's shitting like, on me now those are two different I don't things. think it's the shitting on you I'm I'm just saying is that that opportunity for you to have a story I was like oh this was the her first time doing something and that magical moment like oftentimes I will tell you talk to somebody who's been married for a very long time and just listen to the stories that they would normally share like if it's a couple. Oftentimes, there will be great experiences they had together, and some of the most memorable ones are the things they got to do together that it was like the first time they experienced it, because it was something new for the both of you, so it became something that gets imprinted in your mind for the both of you, Yeah, yeah as I, opposed I can... to it's something that's going to become the first thing for you, so it's going to get imprinted in your mind, but on hers, it's going to be just another one. But you're, right. now you're changing it, because now you're saying you're, now you're saying married. No, I'm People just saying when you talk to some as an example, talk to somebody who's been married for a long time and just listen to their stories. I'm not saying I that it's right or wrong. That. I know a married I'm, couple I'm just that. listen to them and you will notice yeah. that a lot of their great memories are probably gonna fall within it's exactly so first experiences in that way. Yeah. Yeah, I know a married couple and it's exactly that. Like anytime they bring up memories, especially ones with impact, it's you say that's what helped build to them getting married. Not just, them, not just them being married. So because like, couples all, can all do these, this too, all these though. Magical moments is what I'm, is what like, really ended up it's for them going not, along the path. Not only getting married, but being together and still being together after so long. Okay. Oh, and now I does, see what you guys are saying. And it yeah. doesn't even have to be okay. ma- magical moments. It could even be like, yo, do you remember the first time we were at an apartment and we didn't have money to buy? Uh, like the first time we moved together, we slept we on the air mattress the first we didn't night. Have, and exactly. Yeah. Like Stuff that was like an that. experience you had it as a yeah. one or like like little things like that. It could be big experiences, small experiences, but if it was first, like those are the ones that kind of add up and build up into that long term. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I see, I see what you guys are saying. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just> saying. <laughs> right, well, please hit the like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Never Famous. <clears throat> this has been Never Famous. I don't know my my shit went down like that. But, um... Oh. Damn, we kind of we we ended up in a whole different conversation. Like, chill. <laughs> we ended up in a whole different conversation. So I just let us know how you guys feel about men today. Are they lacking drive and and, and what she what else what did she say? Drive motivation and there was a third thing. They yeah. don't go up to women anymore. Hmm. Well, let us know how you guys feel about today's today's Gen Zers, the young men of today. As you can say, Gen Z and Generation Alpha. Generation Alpha. That's what's after Gen Z. Mm-hmm. It's a fucked up name. That's it.